You talking to me? It's gonna be legendary. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Ho, 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 you're listening to Natalie Lipka and Wayne Frazier on Hollywood Close-Up. You lived two blocks down and I never even knew it. My daddy overhauled your old man's Buick. You sang in the choir, I slept in the back pews every Sunday. And when Skinner came to town, we were both in the crowd singing, give me three steps, give me three steps, mister. All that time, I don't know how I missed you. Well, give me three steps, mister. Three hey. steps. And <laughs> hey, then some. Hey, and then some. I'm Wayne Frazier. And I'm Natalie Lipka. And this is Hollywood Close-Up, and we are two actors talking our way to the top. Please check out our website at natalieandwayne.com and on Twitter and Instagram at Natalie and Wayne. And please subscribe on iTunes and listen every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on our affiliate internet radio station, WLOR. Wow. You know what else you can find on, on iTunes? What's that, Natalie? More music from Losers Like Us, Woo! which is our music for this week again. They're back, and we're excited, and so check them out on iTunes. And we have a very special guest in the studio. She's a director, writer, producer, teacher. Like, she does everything. Everything. Mary Lou Belli will Yes, be that's going to be awesome coming up. How are you, Rena Marie in the house? Hey, I'm good. Yeah. How are you guys? Wonderful. Good, just, good. Just great, Wonderful. great. Well, it is a, it is a, Yeah, it is a good day. Uh, <gasps> the uh, I can breathe. Writer strike is not going to happen. <laughs> yes. So we uh, yeah, <laughs> it has so. been announced. It's for real. Yep. Whew. It's pretty cool. I will be talking a little bit more about that in uh, the not so quick and quirky news here shortly. What do you know? Um, but we are happy about that, and we are going to uh, segue into. Let me get this up on the uh, yeah, computer here. Yeah, we were looking at TV Insider about the different shows and when their finales are happening, if they'll be renewed, or if mm-hmm. they're likely renewed, or if they're unfortunately canceled, mm-hmm. um, or likely canceled. But it's an interesting. Um, Look, as I said on TV Insider, pretty excited American Housewife is likely renewed. Do you watch yeah, that? Yeah, oh. I, I, I do not. I love that show. It's super funny. Um, that and Bla- uh, Blackish is likely going to yeah. be renewed. There's a, yeah, uh, it's it's listed by, um, Brenda Marie, can we get a shot of that on, on the other screen there? I don't know if you can do that. No, no. just kidding. All right. Just, they can look it up online I, later. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's everything's uh, in, in the sections of, uh, you know, networks. ABC, Networks, CBS, and all that. And so there's some interesting uh, um, things here, like, you know, like Scandal is back. Of course. Yeah. Um, of course. <clears throat> the Middle is renewed. Yes. But Modern Family, it says only likely renewed? What's up with that? I'm pretty sure they'll be back, but who knows, you know? Um, and Shark I, Tank? I'm just wondering if a lot of this was... Um, was because the tentative strike might have happened. You know what I mean? And if, like, shows were just going to kind of dissipate, um, this I may wonder. end up being even uh, um, more up-to-date uh, on their on their site later. Who knows? So are um, you saying we shouldn't be talking about this? No, no, I think this is great. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it's hard to say when some are likely canceled or some are, are likely renewed, when, you know, like, who knows? It's just a prediction. <laughs> you know? Just a prediction. Oh, well, oh, there it is. Oh, it happened. You know what? She is magical. Yeah, Rena Marie. I had to push a few buttons. Rena Marie, you are more than likely renewed. <laughs> okay, She's... good. You are definitely <laughs> renewed. I want to be renewed just because of that. Awesome you already, that you already were. Executed. <laughs> but, I mean. <laughs> totally renewed for the season. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I thought it was interesting. What was it? Um, it says here, two broke girls likely canceled. But then oh. another side I saw earlier said it might be renewed, and I'm not sure. So that's why this is tough to go, you know, is it 
canceled? Is it not? Is it renewed? Is it not? But this is, you know, check it out. See what you think. It just um, kind of is an interesting list. Just also so that you find out when the series finale or season finale is happening. So you don't want to miss that. So that's good. Right. Like, I didn't know that MasterChef Junior season finale is May 18th. Oh, well, I, well who, who would have known? I'm, I'm a little bit addicted to that show. Are Anything you? Gordon Ramsay. Master Chef, Hell's Kitchen, all that, and we started watching Master Chef Junior, and oh my gosh, I can't believe these children are cooking these dishes. Really, it's crazy. They, I would be, I'm one to just put, you know, cereal in a bowl and. Right, and, these <laughs> kids are like cooking. I don't eat steaks, and and there's all this pressure, and I'm like, how is this possible? Multi course meal. Yes, <laughs> and cooking for a lot of people. And yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Well, you know, future. It always makes me nervous to see kids handle knives. There's just something about it that you know, you see this this child who's not even into puberty yet wielding this massive <laughs> chef, yeah. chef's knife, and it's just like, oh my gosh, something is just wrong I was about like, that. But it's awesome at the same time. Where are the supervisors on this? Are they like right, right off camera? Right. You know what I mean? I'm and sure there are. I'm sure they're all there. I'm sure there. You know, there's lots of supervision on that. Yeah, side. sure. And they handle this pressure. I would say sometimes better than the regular master chef. Sure. The adults. They just they just kind of flip through it like a spatula, <laughs> or a spatula. <laughs> I don't know where that's going. I don't either. <laughs> but um, well done. But it, yeah, so it might be back. But they, you know, go check out the list. Uh, all those Chicago shows: just Chicago Fire, yeah. Chicago Justice, Chicago Med, Chicago PD. And uh, NCIS, she, she, all those are likely renewed yeah, too, right? Yeah, if not I, already renewed. I hope so, yeah. I hope so. Um, and then... Uh, this is us. Of course, yeah. This is us. You know, it's going to be... Uh, yeah, so uh, check it out. We're, you know, we just kind of touched on it as best we could. Um, we're just very excited that there's no writer's strike, so... Yes. That's Thank the important you thing. Thank know that. <clears throat> yep. And I think now it is time... Is it? For some social media with uh, yours truly, Natalie Lipka. Oh, a yes, little social media moment. Well, I was seeing this. I was reading it on BoredPanda.com. Lord Panda. The Lord humans. Panda. Bored? Oh, you say Bored. L- Lord or Bored? Bored. Oh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Bored. Lord, it's a panda. I thought you said, Lord Panda at your Lord. service. I am Lord Panda. Um, I, I don't. Go. No, sorry. Okay. Whoopsie daisy. Starting over. So, the Helix tattoo is taking over Instagram. Have you seen this? It's 10 plus pics will make you want to get one too. The Helix is uh, on your ear. Do you know what I'm talking about? So, they, ha- they are getting tattoos like on the back of their ear and on their ear. Hmm. Yeah, huh. it's, it's pretty cool. They're getting, uh, people are getting uh, spider webs and cuffs, ivy flowers. I mean, I don't have a tattoo, but it did make me consider it. What if I got a tattoo of an ear exactly like my ear on top of my ear? That sounds like a waste of money. <laughs> I'll be honest. But hey. That hey, sounds like it hurts. It's your art, dude. Uh, I don't it's know. your art. Sounds it's like okay. it hurts. Um, also, I came across Goldcast's Facebook page this week after seeing the video they posted of the inspirational speech from Taraji P. Henson that we also shared on our Facebook page, Hollywood Close Up. And so I clicked on the Goldcast page and liked it right away. According to the bio, they are in the dream business. They want to change the world one inspired dreamer at a time. They create self development articles, videos, and ebooks. Designed to keep you motivated, inspired, and on the track to success. It looks pretty awesome. So check it out. That's Goalcast on Facebook. And then, of course, hashtag Tony Awards 2017 is trending because the nominees were announced today. And the ceremony is June 11th at 8 p.m., of course, hosted by Kevin Spacey. Some of the nominations are Sally Field for The Glass Menagerie, Corey Hawkins for Six Degrees of Separation, Danny DeVito for Arthur Miller's The Price, just to name a few. Oh, wow. So, of course, if you just look up hashtag Tony Awards 2017, you're going to see a bunch of things about the nominations. So congratulations to everyone. And that is my little social media moment. Oh, it's delightful. <laughs> it was, you're it's always just delightful. delightful. <laughs> you're just delightful. And that, Marie, don't ever stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> Flattery will get me everywhere. And now it's time <laughs> for the Not So Quick and Quirky News <laughs> with Lord Panda. Lord Panda. <laughs> Sorry. You're so crazy. <sighs> well, the, you know, the fate of the Furious continues to reign at the box office number one spot. Uh, for three weeks in a row, it has now made $193 million. Whoa. It's a lot of gas. 
According to Des... <laughs> oh, he was holding for laughter. <laughs> oh, sorry. So and, sorry. And I got crickets. Where are... So where, sorry. Where's, where's We're Lord Panda? We're going to get a Panda. sound effect for that. We're going to get a cricket sound effect. Oopsies. So, we Lord Panda when I can. He laughs at everything I do. <laughs> According to Deadline.com, the... <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's going to be one of those shows. Uh, according, according to Deadline.com, the WGA and the AMPTP, which is the bargaining unit that represents over 350 companies across the country, or the Alliance of Motion Pictures and Television Producers, have reached a tentative three-year agreement. A big sigh of relief as a very large writer strike was looming in Hollywood. Um, this uh, member of the strike that happened in 2007 and 8, mm-hmm. um, we uh, were subjected to a lot of reality TV and. Uh, uh, <coughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Wayne. So, <laughs> can you save that for another time? Yeah. Um, so we're glad that that's not going to happen. Um, so whew, on that, and um, guys, <laughs> it's not so quick and quirky. For sure. Uh, if you haven't watched the touching opening monologue from Jimmy Kimmel from the oh Jimmy Kimmel gosh. show last night, um, you got to check it out after our show. Um, it is uh, all about his baby boy uh, and his wife and family and this turmoil they went through when the child was born last week, but he uh, found out that he had a heart murmur, two holes on each side of his heart. Uh, the story is it's heart wrenching, but it comes out with a great ending. Um, it is uh, trending right now, and it is an amazing story. And we certainly are uh, here at Hollywood Close Up, uh, absolutely, with Jimmy Kimmel, his friends and family, yeah. and, and the little baby, and uh, Billy. Yeah. Yeah. Wish the best. Uh, what a yeah. what a horrible thing when you have a child to go through something like that for anybody. But you know, so uh, our hearts and uh, and thoughts go out to you, the Kimmel family. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all I got for uh, the not so quick and quirky, and it was not so quick and quirky. Not you <laughs> ran out the music, but. I'm glad you did. I appreciate it. I'm Wayne Frazier. And I'm Natalie Lipko. We'll be right back on Hollywood Close Up with Mary Lou Belli. Davey! Davey! Where is that boy? Ever since I learned to crawl, I was out the door and in that yard. Head on the ground like a big old dog. My mama said, man, that kid's bizarre. He's always digging in the dirt. My dad said, boy, keep it up that way. Find yourself in China someday. So I dug in the sun, dug in the rain, because I wanted to get some chicken chow mein. I was digging. In the dirt Yeah, dig it In the dirt Dig when we're happy Dig when we're hurt Digging why I figure we're here on Earth Keep digging So I finally grew up and I went to work My boss was a typical hard-nosed jerk He said, you see that pile there, son? I want it all gone for the day is done I started digging In the dirt I met me a girl that I really dug A country queen as cute as a bug Got us a place at the edge of town That's where we set our roots on down Started digging In the dirt yeah, dig it. In the dirt. Dig when we're happy. Dig when we're hurt. Dig it why I figure we're here on us. Keep digging. In the dirt. Yeah, dig it. In the dirt. Now, one of these days I might strike oil. Finally, get some for all this toil. But if I don't, it's no big deal Cause I just love the way I feel When I'm digging In the dirt Yeah, digging In the dirt Now I got a son, he's a chip off the block Loves to play with that dirt and rock 
And when I die and they lower me away, he'll be standing with a shovel at the edge of my grave. He'll be digging in the dirt. Yeah, digging in the dirt. Dig when we're happy, dig when we're hurt. Digging why, baby, we're here on us. Keep digging in the dirt. Yeah, digging. And we are back on Hollywood Close-Up. I'm Natalie Lifka. And I'm Wayne Frazier. Um, and I'm super excited because we just got this amazing book, the new sitcom career book. I know. Maybe that's the second it. edition, too. I, second I, edition. I have <gasps> the first edition. Stop it. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. And, and signed by the two writers. What? Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. And we have one of the writers here today. She's the co-author, as I said, of the new sitcom career book. She's directed films, web series, and too many TV shows to count, but most <laughs> recently, Famous in Love. We have director, writer, producer, author, and teacher. The Emmy Award winning Mary Lou Belli is with us. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you for being here. Absolute pleasure to have you here. And so thank you for bringing these books. Yeah. I mean, she's written so many books oh, oh can we show these real quick yeah. there we go the directors this is two of them and directors okay, tell the story has just yes. been translated into chinese yeah wow. did you do that yourself uh, <laughs> i have a lot of skills that's not one of them <laughs> although i just did get back from teaching in japan <laughs> oh wow with the help of a translator 24 7 wow that is awesome how did that go really well very very well were you teaching cool. uh were you teaching uh, more because you do uh just a slew of directing um, i was actually teaching acting i was teaching yeah. acting for the camera which is one of my favorite things to teach right because it's you know there's such a, a difference between that and stage acting and i just feel like there's a lot of talented people out there that don't know the difference yeah and and, and are you you're going from uh teaching the three camera and and the single camera and everything kind of getting everything a little bit in there because everything's changed so much it is. You know, um, I'm really primarily directing single camera work now on television. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, the camera, you know, looks in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. knows, it knows what you're, what you're thinking and it's the mirror to your soul. And that's what makes you special in terms of what characters you bring alive. Sure. So I'm always looking for, you know, actors who know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or it teach them how to know that. And is there a way to, I guess there is a way to teach uh, somebody that's been maybe acting for a few years or thinks they might know how to act and, and teaching them or reteaching them how to... Uh... You know, I teach with a three-pronged method. I teach by doing because I think um, it's always been, you know, that kind of constructivist form has always been how I taught my kids in terms of schools they went to. And then, um, but I think you learn by doing and by practicing. Mm -hmm. So that's always the, the most important component. But the second one is um, learn by watching others and having that very critical eye that says, judges what's good and not good, not for yourself, mm -hmm. um, unless you're performing and not watching yourself. And then the third way is to play it back. So I like to do it by doing, by modeling yourself after people who are really good at it, and then by um, watching yourself or others that you know well doing it and then it, you know that's where playback comes in what about um, a lot of a lot of actors that you, you hear this uh, on occasion actors that uh, they don't like to watch themselves or they don't watch their own playback well, I mean you know what I understand that completely and um, I wouldn't ever encourage anyone <clears throat> who's in the middle of doing a, let's say a TV series to be studying at the same time because I think they're two very, very different process. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you're in one, it might be disruptive to the other one. So when someone doesn't want to watch themselves, I think it's because they're guarding very protectively 
that that director inside of us that wants to watch while we're doing it, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's destructive. I mean, it's one of the reasons that I'm, you know, I started out as an actor. I'm not as good an actor as I was mm. when I was acting full time because the director in me is always the critic mm-hmm. and you don't want to be the critic. You you know, to be a successful actor, you have to be 100 percent in the moment at all times. And if you're watching yourself, then somebody else is in there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I could see, especially if you're, let's say you watch a film after it happens and then you can learn from mm-hmm. that. But as long as you're not as long as you're able to be in the moment, like mm-hmm. you said, and not be directing yourself. Mm-hmm. I think people struggle with that. Is I that agree. something that you deal with with actors? And how do you help them through that? You know, then if a person doesn't, you know, as I said, there's three ways I teach. But if one of those isn't the right one for them, Mm -hmm. and everybody's an individual, and I nearly always trust the person who, especially if they've been acting um, before, knows their process. Mm -hmm. And then then you're supplementing, you know, what they know. Mm -hmm. But if it's, you know, it was interesting. I won't name the school, but my, my son, who's an actor, um... He went to visit many, many colleges in terms of where he wanted to apply. Um, And he had been working already, and he knew he had uh, seen people on television. He was very well-versed in terms of acting and the process and its language. And um, he went to one very, very well-known school, and they basically said to him, we're going to tear down everything you know and build you back into this kind of actor, and they named their school. Mm -hmm. And my son said, literally stood up and said, we're going, Mom, because he was wise enough to to know what he didn't know already and wanted to learn that. Mm -hmm. And he just finished a BFA program that he was very, very happy with. So he chose the right school. But he also knew that the things that he did know that were right and felt right and and worked for him were not tools he was willing to give up in order to Mm -hmm. become that school's kind of actor. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. Because, you know, you can go to so many different uh, instructors, whether you're in L.A. or, you know, where you might be, uh, you know, studying the art, and you can go and everybody has different ideas and and tools, uh, and you just... It takes sometimes takes years to figure out exactly what tools the best ones work. Okay, so here's one. And it's, it always baffles me that actors don't know this about themselves. Are they primarily audio learners or visual learners? Right. Mm-hmm. And just the way you approach a script, you know? I want to say with that, that wonderful app rehearsal, too, that people use all the time mm-hmm. now, I want to say, well, you know, if you're not a visual learner, get the app. Start listening to your scripts in order to learn your lines yeah. and things like that. It's just a, right. a great great way to know things and and my god it's life a life lesson to know whether well, that's that, how you learn the best that's so funny you should say that because uh just within the last couple of years for myself as an actor i have realized that uh it, i am a visual actor i am absolutely a visual mm-hmm. actor mm-hmm. if i can put every you know as i break down a script uh whether it's comedy or drama as i break it down i read each line and, and if i can put myself and see that person you know whether they're in front of me or not and put you know uh, he was downtown LA and then I pick a spot in LA where I was downtown that's you know you know synonymous with that particular script or scene and it has done wonders for myself yeah uh, Yeah. I can say yeah and I would say I I'm with you I'm definitely a visual actor because if I'm listening to things I my brain can go in other places you know if I'm just sitting there listening and unless I just am you know, there's there's no other distractions. But mm-hmm. when it's visual and I can see it, I process it better, for sure. Yeah. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing yeah. thing. And yeah. then for people who have, you know, any sort of, um, you know, ADHD or any visual um, uh, uh, pr- uh, problems or challenges, you know, very much so, audio is usually a better way for them to go, especially yeah. with right. dyslexia. Yeah, right. and, and there's so many distractions out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's true. You know, get five mm-hmm. different things sitting in front of us, computers, phones, everything. Yeah, you know, phones going TVs. off. TVs. <laughs> Lots of distractions. But I do want to thank you for all of your 
resources that you provide and and everything. And also, thank you for loving actors. I do. I've love heard actors. you say that many <laughs> times, and it just makes me so happy. Um, I was one. I'm married mm-hmm. to one. My son's one. And <laughs> All in the it, family. It is, but you know, it's more than that. Um, and it's the whole um, the book that you didn't hold up. Um, is acting for young actors. Mm-hmm. And the whole philosophy behind that is not, you know, run and become a professional actor. It's that the study of acting at the high school level can be the greatest gift you give to yourself in life because it teaches you so many things about interpersonal relationships, mm-hmm. really reading subtext, you know, um, studying and researching roles that might be somewhere in history. So it just gives you a real context of yourself in the world and how you interrelate to people because mm-hmm. that's what good actors do. Yeah. And it, and if you want to study acting at the teenage level, um, go and do it because it will just open up thousands of things for you in life that are not related to acting yeah. that will make you better at it. Sure. Yeah, and definitely with relationships. I've seen that in my own life, how to communicate and take in what the other person is saying and really listen. What would you say? And- <laughs> what? No, I know it exactly never gets, what you're I just that do that. <laughs> never gets old, Wayne <laughs> Frazier. Never. What? But I'm Wait a minute. <laughs> but that was good All right, timing. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to talk uh, real quick. You, uh, uh, as a director, and you've directed from, uh, you know, NCIS, uh, New, New Orleans. Orleans. Yeah. No, you say New Orleans or New Orleans? We were, New Orleans. We, we were, were discussing this in <laughs> <New> Orleans. <laughs> tomato, <laughs> tomato, right? <laughs> I said, how does the show pronounce it? <laughs> well, you know, it depends because, you know, Scott Vacula has the, is Supposedly, his character is born and bred there, so he's um, sporting an authentic New Orleans mm-hmm. accent. But Lucas, who is on the show, um, who plays LaSalle, his character is actually from Alabama, where he's from. So he's okay. doing another accent. Yeah, and then you have, you know, some of the times our um, people are coming in from the FBI in uh DC, so they sport a different. They say accent. a different. I love yeah. it. When you do a show, okay, so example, um, famous in love, which is mm-hmm. coming out next week, I believe. My the episode I directed, you can uh, binge them all now on Freeform yeah. or Hulu. But yes, the episode I directed um, will be on a week from Wednesday. Oh, that's fantastic! Yes. Yeah, and, and it's a good one. So when you go in <clears throat> as a director and and say you're you're starting in a series that may have already been established like you, know, you haven't directed every single NCIS but or, or famous in love but you go in and somebody else has already established as a particular style for mm-hmm. that particular episode as a director uh, do the, do, does a network or company encourage you to stay with that particular style of directing, or are you able to really put in your Mary Lou's way and, and, well, and that? First of all, a style of directing, I'm not sure what that means. In terms of the visual tone and the visual Maybe that's what, book yeah. of, the, uh, of the episode, um, here's how I see my job. I've been hired to deliver a pizza. You know, that pizza might have toppings on it and those might vary, (laughs) but I got to deliver the pizza. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so um, for me, and I love the challenge of television um, because of this, it's studying what a pizza looks like (laughs) and saying, oh, and those are the ingredients of every pizza known to man. And then I know how to do that. So I love it. Yeah. Well, we'll coordinate it. And and yes, and I can put my finesse on it. Um, I like to think as an actor's director, that um, I can bring out the nuances and the performances in the big moments um, that, you know, aid in the storytelling. And then there's always something visual that you might want to um, do, but within the confines of right. the show they've created and the visual tone that they want for that show. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. And the fact that you're able to just <clears throat> concise it into, it's like, Delivering a pizza. I think that analogy <laughs> is so great and just helps me as an actor to understand your job better, too. Absolutely. So thank you for that. You're welcome. And and with that being said, we do like to play this little game. Time goes so fast. and you know I what? can't believe how quickly time went. You know what's, what's great, though, real quick, is the fact that we're going to be able to see uh, Mary Lou Belli's uh, directing now for at least another three years because the writer strike is is not going to happen. Oh, thank you. Woo. Thank you. I was and that's so yeah. Happy this morning. <laughs> <laughs> like we all were. A big whoosh and sigh. Yeah. Um, will you come back and see us 
for sure on, here on the show because we would love to have you back. I'd love to come back. Some Thank more. you so much. Cool. And it's uh, not far from my house. Oh, oh great. <laughs> perfect. perfect. I'm in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask you a quick uh, question. Hollywood Close-Ups, quick and quirky game. Just quickest answer right off the top of your head. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Who will be your ideal TV parents? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I don't. I don't. You mean people who already exist on like or, on a yeah, TV could show? Be anybody from TV or, or even film? It doesn't like a matter. TV family, and you can. Well, I, you know what? I would take Scott Bakula, and I would take the woman who was his last love interest on the show, Chelsea Field. Oh, there you Perfect. go. <laughs> All right, love it. Uh, beer or wine? Wine, but usually neither. Oh, okay. okay, perfect. All right, never beer. If you were a Muppet, which Muppet would you be? Kermit. <laughs> yeah, the one I could think of the name of, but it begins with a K and K's are funny. I like that. <laughs> There's a director working He's a in. director. <laughs> uh, final question on Hollywood Close-Ups, Quick and Quirky Game. What's your favorite podcast you're on right now? I think it's this one. Well, that's the right <laughs> answer. <laughs> My goodness, you have been a pleasure. Yes. Please make sure, of course, to check out these two wonderful books. And the other one is for young actors, correct? Yes. Yes. So we will put links to these on the episode description Thank on our you. website. Yeah. Yeah, and take a listen and, and, and watch uh, Famous in Love uh, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. On Freeform and check out uh, all these different directing uh, adventures that this young lady has done. And uh, and wish you much more and, and luck and everything else. Thank you so much. And look for the quad next <clears throat> season as well. Oh, that's oh, right. yeah. a good one. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a real good one. We'll talk about that next time. Good. Yes, sounds good. And thank you, of course, to Rena Marie, the Network Studios, and all of our listeners out there. Yes, and please remember that cancer has affected so many of our lives, and only you can help by donating to cancerresearch.org and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society at lls.org. Let's end this disease once and for all, people. Yes, and of course, uh, check out past episodes, and we will be back next week at NatalieWayne.com, and check out losers like us who are playing their music on iTunes. For Hollywood Close-Up, I'm Natalie Lipka. And I'm Wayne Frazier. Until the next one. Peace. You've been listening to Hollywood Close-Up with Wayne Frazier and Natalie Lipka. Be sure to visit NatalieAndWayne.com for past episodes as well as information on future ones. Also, be sure to rate and comment about the show in iTunes. Until next time, bye-bye. My home, my in-laws might be outlaws I can see the telltale sign Santa Claus, I think my